Who doesn't love a burrito? A good burrito, yes. And a burrito in a jar? <laughs> this is going to be amazing. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sutton's Days. My name is Lisa, and we are all about pantry preparedness. Yes, we are. And today is another installment of Canuary. Happy Canuary, my friends. It is a month-long collaboration where we bring you a canning video every single day, and it is sponsored by Four Jars Canning Lids and here at Sutton's Days. On the 31st, there's going to be a great giveaway, and I'll have more information for that in the description box below. You have to go below, okay? That's going to have all of the really great information and the channels and the dates that they are participating and the master playlist. Remember, this logo right here, my friends, means that it's an official Canuary video because, you know, great ideas. People tend to snag the names. So, today we are going to make a burrito in a jar. Now, my friend Darcy over at the Purposeful Pantry sent me a screenshot of something she found on Pinterest. Should you look for canning recipes on Pinterest? No. Was she looking for a canning recipe on Pinterest. No, she was not. So, but she saw this and she said, you need to make this a safe canning recipe. And I went, brilliant. You know, Darcy's brilliant. And so I sat down and I went through it and I broke it all down and I looked at a bunch of different factors and we're going to turn this into a safe canning recipe so that you have a burrito in a jar with just one extra little thing to fix when you're ready to crack that open. Super simple. Let's get started. For this recipe, <laughs> um, I'm going to be using pork roast. You know, some of you may know if you've been here, we raise pigs. So I have some pork roast. That's why it says not for sale because it was processed to stay here. Okay. And so I am going to cut up this pork roast. Can you use chicken or beef? Absolutely. You can use beef roast. You can use ground beef. You can use chicken. You can use turkey. You can use pork and any cut of pork because we're going to par cook it. When you are dissecting a recipe, because that's basically what we're doing, okay, is there's some foolhardy person out there putting out a recipe that puts other people at risk. And God, that's horrible. <laughs> I mean, I just dislike that so much. So, where is that bone? So, um turning this into a viable recipe that everyone can can and enjoy just makes my heart go pitter patter. So I sat down and I dissected every little part of it. And I knew that the rice, because they canned the rice, um, I knew that the rice was a no-go. So take that out of the equation. Okay. After that, it's meat and beans. Meat and beans with some onion. I'm going off memory here right now. Um, onion and seasoning, okay? And the really cool part is, is when you look it up at the National Center for Home Food Preservation, okay? Meat and beans can for the same time. So, poof, that makes that easier, right? So I immediately set off to soaking some beans because we need the beans to be soaked. No dry canning the beans, okay? And then to figure out what meat. Well, I wanted to get these pork roasts out of my freezer, so we are doing that. Getting around this bone can be fun, but a good knife is very helpful. You guys know I love my knife, right? And the link is down below, because somebody always asks, where did you get that knife? This knife is amazing. And before I start any project like this, I run it through my Rada knife sharpener, that link's down below too, um, 20 to 30 times, not putting any pressure on it, just dragging it across so that it gets even more sharp than it was because I literally use this knife for everything, absolutely everything. Now, Lisa, can I make broth out of this bone? You sure you can. Here's the thing though, so it's, it's keeping your expectations in check. Um, you can make broth using that bone. I recommend it. I do it because um, it still gives you a really great flavored broth, okay? But unlike chicken and unlike um, beef bones, there's no marrow in that bone. So you're not going to get that out of it, but you're going to get a really tasty 
yummy broth out of it. So I would go ahead and roast it right along with the pork or put it in the freezer until you've got time. Whoop, got that backwards. And, and then roast that. Now for this recipe, even though I am par cooking it, I'm still gonna trim up quite a bit of the fat. I'm gonna cut these down into manageable little pieces here and put them on the cookie sheet because we are going to par cook these. Um, I'm putting it at 350 and they'll probably be in there for about 30 minutes um, because they are only going to be par cooked. You don't want to fully cook them because if you do that um, according to the National Center then they are good for soup because again it changes the density. Okay, So um, because we are filling the jar I am only going to par cook these. Now the good news about that is that the yummy juices that come out of the meat will be in the jar. It's gonna be fantabulous. So we are gonna get this in the oven, par cooking. I've got the beans that are soaking, so I'm gonna to have to drain them. And then we will start creating all of the deliciousness for our very own home canned burrito mix, where literally all you have to do is make up some rice and I mean, if you're really looking to save time, minute rice, right? Um, or you can make your own minute rice by cooking regular, you know, white rice, okay? And then dehydrating it so that um, when you're ready, that's like your own homemade minute rice. It takes like no time to hydrate. And in theory, oops, see, we wanna get that little bone out. In theory, um, we should have enough liquid in the jar to help rehydrate the rice because it's not like you're gonna use a whole big ton of it, you know? Now, <laughs> I'm saying that um, I'm gonna be canning this in pint jars because that makes sense for our household. Yes, you can can it in uh, quart jars and that will change probably the perspective a little bit on the amount of liquid, but it's not a big deal. Okay, so you just drain the juice and use that plus some water if you have to, to cook up the rice. And then you've got that great flavoring in the rice too. Fastest burritos in history. Oh yeah, where I was going with this was I dissected the recipe, I looked it over, I thought, okay, this is totally a recipe that I can make a safe canning recipe and then, um, compared it against everything that I could think of in the National Center for Home Food Preservation. And then I reached out to my master canner friend, Linda, and I said, hey, Tulilu, um, this is what I wanna do. This is my thought process with this. This is my methodology. And, um, and she said, yep, you got it. And the only thing that she mentioned to compare it against also um, is similar to, hey, can you do this? Will this work? is to find something on the National Center of similar, hmm, of, that is similar, okay? And in this point, in this case, she pointed out um, the chili con carne recipe on the National Center because it uses the meat and it uses the beans. So, yeah, that'll be, that'll be a soup bone. Um, and so once I went back and double-checked that, I said, absolutely. This, this can absolutely be safely canned so that all of my friends out there in YouTube land can have a burrito in a jar. So the long and short of this is you can use beef, you can use chicken, and you can use pork butt, pork shoulder, pork loin, whatever the case may be. These are a couple of pork roasts that I had, and we are going to say around mm, 10, 10 and a half pounds for this batch that I'm doing, and that's what will be in the recipe uh, linked down below, okay? So that you can also safely can this. Now remember, don't be, don't be paranoid about the fat, okay? Because it's going into the oven. So it's gonna cook a bunch of that too that will not end up in the jar. Some of it will, some of it'll end up in the jar. Fat is where the flavor is. There's not gonna be so much that it impacts anything and it will not go rancid if you can it properly, okay? Because it is just such a tiny, small amount. So that's, that's my methodology 
um, for creating a safe canning recipe from some kind of nonsense that somebody put on the internet. Don't, don't, please don't. And I'm telling you, even for my stuff, do not just take my word for it, okay? Do not take anybody's word for it. Do your research. You are putting yourself and your family at risk if you are canning something improperly. So don't take this lightly. While there is a level of creativity in play, it is not so much that you can be lax on your end. You need to take responsibility for what you are feeding to you and yours. So things like things like water bath canning, uh, you know, vegetables, low acid vegetables, or or water bath canning meat. I'm sorry, you know, if if circumstances are not there where you can afford a pressure canner right now. Keep looking, my friends. They're out there. They not only go on sale brand new, but you can find them used. That you know, save save your pennies and put your time and effort towards finding one. Don't just put stuff up because somebody on the internet says it's okay. I, it's it's just not good. So make sure to always check everything that you see against what is on the National Center for Home Food Preservation. Use that deductive reasoning, that logic, and make good choices for you and your family. Because if if you don't, then you're not here and we can't spend time together. And I kind of like you guys. I have fun doing this. So I want to make sure that you are doing everything that you can to make sure that your family is safe. Especially when you're talking about pork, okay? Pork is not something that you eat medium rare. <laughs> it's just not done, okay? Um, it's not the safest way to eat pork. And I'm a medium rare steak gal all the way, okay? I want it talking to me. I want it to continue to moo as I am cutting it up and putting it in my face, but not pork. So when you are par cooking pork, you want to make sure that you're par cooking it, not completely cooking it. So you're getting it cooked enough to brown a little bit on the outside, but it's not so cooked that you would safely eat it. In my quest to dirty all the dishes that I humanly possibly can, this is how I'm doing this because it just makes the most sense to me. I'm going to divide the par-cooked pork into the jars. I'm not using the liquid in the pan because that is a lot of fat. So I am just going to divide this up. I have absolutely no idea how many jars this will make. So we're kind of faking it till we make it, you know. That's part of the fun of dissecting recipes is seeing exactly what you can get out of this. So typically a pint jar will hold approximately a pound of meat. Um, so you don't want a whole pound going in. So I'm thinking half the jar, okay? And then we'll um, make the rest of it, the rest of the ingredients which is good because I think this will make amazing burritos. Now the fun part, you guys know, if you've canned meat before with me, then you know that when you pull this meat out, it is shreddable, okay? Um, which is perfect for a burrito because you'll just take this out and you'll heat it up. And when you heat it up, the meat will start to shred apart a little bit, which is good because then as you mix it, you know, um, it will be dispersed throughout the entire uh, burrito. But if you like it in chunks, don't, just don't mix it so hard. Okay, don't make it harder than it's got to be. So two, let's see, okay. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. We'll get 11 jars out of this, maybe 12. Maybe 12. And again, you can go lighter on the meat and heavier on the bean. If you want, you can skip the meat altogether and just add more beans. That is totally up to you. But I know that the girls are going to be very grateful to have me drip this over their kibble tonight. Whoop. Lion pork. Okay, get in there. Um, so it's not going to go to waste. Not by any stretch. But I wanted to get this done 
um, before we start the other stuff because we're going to have to heat up the rest of the stuff and add it over this. Okay, there we go. So, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12. So I got 12 not evenly distributed jars with pork. I soaked five cups of pinto beans. So you know when you soak them, it becomes more, right? So I soaked them. I did everything per the National Center, you know, heated them back up, heated them back up, um, and boiled them and, you know, all the fun stuff. So I have that. Now, I also have two and a third cup of bell peppers that were in my freezer. And I have a can of Rotel. There we go. I have seven tablespoons of taco seasoning. Use the stuff you make yourself. Use the stuff you buy at the store. Whatever. It's taco seasoning. Okay. And next is the onions. I'm going so fast I passed myself in the kitchen. Um, there's two cans of Rotel, not just one. Okay. And now we are going to heat this up. That will create... Um, a little bit of liquid, not a lot, okay? Because we're going to be topping this off with water. Basically, that's what it is. So I'm going to get this heated up because I don't want those frozen peppers in there. And then we're going to be topping off the jars. I think I'm going to have extra of this. I'm adding two cups of water to this because we need it more liquid. Yes, we do. Look at that. Is that going to make the best burrito ever? If there's leftover, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be leftover, I'm making soup. Okay, so everything's all heated up in the pot, and we're going to start ladling it in. So I am going to ladle it in, leaving some space. We're going to debubble because we're going to add liquid to it also, okay? Because otherwise you'd be dry canning. And that is not good. That is not good. There's no such thing as... Dry cleaning. There's vacuum sealing and there's trying to kill your family. There's no such thing as dry canning. Okay, so we're gonna get those. Oh, you know, I, I might not be able to make such a big pot of soup, but that's okay too. Because right now I'm focusing on the solids. I'm, I'm not even using a canning scoop. Okay, I am just using my regular scoop. And I'm just getting the stuff in there. And then I will focus on the liquid. So at that point, I will take more of the liquid out of the jar because it's got that, or out of the pot, because it's got that great um, taco seasoning flavor in there, right? So you want to make sure that you're getting that flavor in there because it's burritos. Oh, why would somebody, why would somebody rubble can this? This has got to be so good. And I'll show you what the pot looks like afterwards. Can you leave out the onions? Yes. Can you leave out the peppers? Yes. Can you leave out the pork? Yes. Do I have to use pinto beans? No. Use whatever kind of bean that you want. I don't care. I would not recommend lima beans. That would be gross. You were going to want your pokem stabber or your chopstick. No metal. Do not use metal. Okay. So we are going to work on getting the liquid out of this pot. And we want to bring this up to an inch head space. I'm going to add liquid to the pot so that I'm getting the flavored liquid. Okay, so I ended up adding another two cups of liquid to the pot just because I want that broth, right? And now we're going to bring it into an inch head space. I really am trying to just get the liquid in here. So there's going to be a little leftover, I think, of the veggies. No harm, no foul. I will add it to something yummy. Okay. And remember, you can always add more taco seasoning if you want. Um, that is that is allowed. There's nothing unsafe about that. And we are going to be canning these at the meat time. Yeah. So the pints are going to be 75 minutes. Okay, and if you decide you want to do this in quarts, 
then it goes for 90 minutes. So while I got you here, you're going to go through and you're going to debubble because you want to make sure that there's no air in there, okay? And you want to make sure that everything is at that headspace that you need, which is an inch. And so if you go through and things are sticking up a little high, then if after you debubble, go ahead and take some out. Um, but a lot of times after you debubble, it looks like it actually goes down because you're helping everything settle down to the bottom too, in addition to removing the air. Don't you love it when I'm testing this stuff out on you guys? So I really do believe that it would be easier, <laughs> okay, to go through and just heat up the vegetables um, and then heat up uh, your water with the taco seasoning because that way, or, or add a half a tablespoon of taco seasoning to each jar and then add hot water um, because this has been a little bit of a, uh, a test. I've had to create more broth just to make sure that I'm getting all the jars. So play with it. That part, you know, that part, you're not going to ruin the safety if you have to mess with that. You may have to do more dishes, um, but you're not going to ruin the safety. Where am I going? I don't know. Okay. And so we're going to go through. We're going to debubble. That one I'm going to have to take some out of, but that's all good. You want that extra liquid in there because that liquid, by the time you're done canning, that liquid is going to be perfect for heating up your instant rice. So once you go through and debubble, you want to make sure that you're at an inch headspace. If you're not, take it out and put it back into the pot, do whatever. I figure at this rate, um, I have <laughs> I have dinner for two nights um, because I'm gonna show you guys how to use this also and how easy it is to have a quick, simple, easy dinner now, normally, a lot of you know I'm an ingredient canner, so a lot of these meals, per se, in a jar um, are not something that I do a lot of. However, due to circumstances, um, I have been creating more of these just because it's easier on fill. So, yes, you could absolutely just can the pork, and then you could just can the beans, and just can the rotel and put all those together and have everything you need to make some awesome burritos. However, by doing this, I am making sure that um, if I'm not up to cooking dinner, that somebody in the house will still eat. And he's, he's pretty easy, so knowing that he can just heat this up with some rice and roll it up in a tortilla. Uh, you know, makes life that much better. Okay, so we have these all where we want them. And I will make adjustments to the recipe so that the recipe that you look at down below, okay, when you click on it, will have the adjustments that I've made as I'm filming. You know what time it is. It's time to wipe those rims because even with a canning funnel, doesn't matter. Guaranteed, you're going to get stuff on the rim. It's also a really great time to triple check those rims to make sure that there are no nicks. Okay, does it always work? No. But the more you check, the better your chances. So, and you don't want any of the debris from the soup, which can occur because a funnel does not guarantee a clean rim, especially if you're me. So you wanna make sure that there's nothing that can get between the lid and the rim of the jar that could potentially cause a failure. And the dogs say hello. Did I mention, ha, ah, four jars lids, four jars canning lids are sponsoring Canuary. They are absolutely epic. They are going to be giving away what? A canner, yeah, and lids and towels and, and a whole bunch of other stuff, okay? And then here at Sutton's Days, we're going to be giving away what? A canner, and we're going to be giving away a steam canner too. So, Four Jars Canning Company, they are the bomb.com. Is that even a thing anymore? Anyway, 
big question that I get all the time is, Lisa, on the directions with the four jars lids, it says to put them in hot water. I don't even know if it says boiling water. It says to put them in hot water. Kind of like the old style like we used to do back in the day. My fellow old time canners, right? Um, now, full disclosure, even back in the day, if I was pressure canning, I didn't boil the lids because it's going under pressure. Um, but with four jars, I still don't. They put that on their directions kind of as a fail safe, okay? They want to make sure that you have the best results possible with the best product possible. And these are the best lids on the market today. Absolutely adore this company. They are fantastic. They have great, great lids. The failure ratio is almost negligible. And they're just a really good lid. They have the, do you see the button? Now it's not as dom, you know, dominant as previous lids, but you will see it, okay? And then the compound on these lids is amazing. Absolutely phenomenal lids. I cannot recommend them highly enough. This goes above and beyond anything that I have mentioned before about four jars. They are the company that stepped up and took care of us when no one else would. When everyone else bailed and said, sorry for your luck, Four Jars said, here we are, try them out. And I'm so glad that I did. I have my canner heating up in the background. We're going to take the lids. We're going to put them on finger tight. Okay, that means put them on until it stops moving. Do not crank them because if you do, then the excess air cannot escape. And that is extremely necessary for a proper canning. And that's why the headspace is so important because part of the calculation of safe canning is the ability to vacate all of the air that is in the jar during that canning process. And if you go changing up the headspace, you'll you'll not get all of the air out, okay? If there's too much headspace or if there's not enough headspace per the recommended amount, then what it can do is cause siphoning because it's working so hard to push out something that's not there. In addition to that, the lids can buckle it's, it's a whole hot mess, okay? But finger tight, just put it on there until it stops moving. Now, sometimes when you're canning, especially during, uh, you know, a process that's as long as meat or beans is, um, the lids can become loose. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. It's normal. It's what happens. Now, because I have to say it, because it's just part of what I do, if your rings are rusty, if your rings are ugly, it doesn't matter. As long as they go onto the jar, okay? As long as they work the way that they're supposed to, does not matter what they look like. It's like a hammer, okay? Because if you're using your hammer, it's going to get ugly. If you're using your rings, they're going to get tarnished. So it's not an engagement ring. It's a tool, just like a hammer. doesn't matter what it looks like. It just matters that it works. We're going to get these loaded up. It's a two stack, okay, because there's 12 pints here. So we're going to get our other rack out, and we're going to stack these in, and we're going to can these for 75 minutes. I will be back when we're done. Okay, we have them in there. Whoop, whoop, whoop. How much water do you add to the canner? Well, if you're using a four jars canner, you add three inches of water before the jars go in. If you have any other kind of canner, you pretty much add three inches of water before the jars go in. Okay, and then we turn it and we lock it, and we're gonna let it vent for 10 minutes. Once it's done venting for 10 minutes, steady stream of steam is what venting is, okay? Then we will put the weight on there. We will wait till it starts to jiggle. We will start our timers for 75 minutes. That's an hour and 15 minutes. We have a multitasking kitchen going here. So these are the jars, look at that. That's gonna be so good. So we're gonna get these out. We're gonna let them sit for at least 12 hours. Okay, you have 24. If any of them didn't seal, you can either reprocess, stick it in the fridge, do whatever. I am gonna show you all how to make burritos out of this. Okay, it smells so good. Look at that. Is that just, oh yeah, very happy lady here. 12 beautiful pints of 
burritos in a jar. It is the next day and all of them sealed. I'm so super happy. So now let's make some burritos. You come home from work, you are tired. You are like so done with this day, but gosh, I'd like a burrito. And no, I don't want it from a gas station. So we are going to take our burrito in a jar, right? We are going to pop that open. Great seal. Check it out. Four jars canning. You can get 10% off if you use the code Sutton's 10. Yes, you can. And so that's what it looks like in the jar, right? And now we're just going to pop that in there. And then I want you to come on over and see what's going on here. Okay. Okay. So that's what it looks like in there. There is liquid. There's not a lot of liquid, but there is liquid. I'm going to add a quarter cup of liquid to that. Why, Lisa? Nobody has soupy burritos and neither will you, my friends. Neither will you, okay? So, and just to show you, I mean, that meat falls apart with a spoon. It's amazing, okay? It is super good. So if you like it chunky, don't beat it up. If you don't like it, you know, if, if you don't like it chunky, um, then go ahead and beat it up and it's fine. So next we're gonna put in a quarter cup-ish of rice. We're gonna turn that heat on. We're gonna put the lid on it, okay? Gonna give it a good stir and get that rice down in there. I'm thinking I might put in, I am, I'm gonna put in a half a cup of rice because I think that's how much liquid I've got in there. Okay, so half a cup of rice. We're gonna put that all in there. We're gonna, the heat's on. There you go. It smells so good. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on and we're gonna let that heat up and we'll be back in a couple minutes. Everybody needs cheese on their burrito, don't they? Burritos just have to have cheese. In less than 10 minutes, it has soaked up the liquid, it has refreshed the rice. Look at that. Okay, burritos. Now you all know I can't wrap a burrito to save my soul, okay? But we're gonna try here. So, you just take a scoop of that out. Get the, get the pot off the heat, okay? And then roll. And we have a burrito. I'm so happy, I'm so happy. Yes, I am. Phil is not here for a taste test. But I can tell you, he's going to love it. He's going to absolutely love it. So I hope that you enjoyed Burrito in a Jar the safe way, you guys. You can do it the safe way. Thank you for joining us for January again. Burritos in a Jar, you guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Remember to comment on all the January videos. The prizes are listed down below. The other channels and what days they are are listed down below. And remember to show up for the grand finale. It's a live show at 7.30 p.m., on the 31st. Happy January!